Let me set up a UDP. But I'm, I'm pinging you actually here. Yeah, I'm not getting anything. Everything was working yesterday. We've done, we, we did our independent little tests. Today, once we've got everything in there now, nothing is working. That's weird. But in the midst of the chaos, Joe figures it out. The wireless network isn't powerful enough. Zaz is upstairs, Terry's downstairs, and they tried to get their computers to talk for the first time. But they're on a wireless network, so there's a lot of information that's not actually being received by Terry. So we're gonna run a physical connection between the two computers. So after he runs a network cable from upstairs Look out below. to downstairs, our long haul cable is done. They've got full communication. Yes! And it seems like all systems might finally be a go. I am receiving signal. Despite the difficulty getting it running, the test is straightforward. All right, you want some punches? If Zaz throws a punch in the lair, the robot should do the same down in the shop. Oh. Okay, we've gone up, let the bout begin. Okay, I'm going to throw one, you tell me what you got. We have a right jab. <laughs> The robot responds exactly as designed. It moves like a champion. Beautiful. Hold on. But Joe's <laughs> not content with these single blows. Yes, can I help you? Terry, we're gonna do some combinations of punches. You ready? Absolutely, Come let's on. do it. Let's do it, we're loving it. With all of the problems that we had this morning, once everything came together and we knew that he was controlling this thing from upstairs, absolutely fantastic. Pressure builds diamonds, I always say, and when you're really up against the wire, when it works, it feels great. <laughs> we got ourselves a fighting robot. But there's no time to celebrate. The deadline is looming, and the second robot is just a pile of steel. It's our last day, and we're supposed to have two robots done by the end of the day. Now we got one robot with the pneumatics working, it's moving, and it's half-dressed. And that's taken two weeks to do. It's a tough deadline to meet, but both robots need to be finished tonight because fight night is tomorrow. It seems like a pretty impossible feat, but, you know, it's just time for all hands on deck and everybody making it happen. So everyone pitches in. Nemo puts the finishing touches on robot one, while the others, including guest welders Kevin and Diana, tag team robot two. We have to finish building the structure of the second robot. We have to attach all the pneumatics to it, and then we gotta get those controlled, and then we gotta go about dressing it, and we're supposed to do that by the end of the day. Um, but <laughs> obviously, we got a lot of work for ourselves. As if that's not enough, midway through the day, the one working robot is brought to its knees. The volume of air that it needs to get up now is too, it's, it's just way too slow. So he and Mike discussed the diagnosis. Is it just truly that heavy? No, it was standing up before with all the armor on it. All that's what? changed is he's added a little length to the arms. But it's not looking good. Right now we ran into some problems. Uh, the robot's having a hard time even standing up. Doesn't really make much sense, actually, because we really haven't added that much weight. So something else must be going on here. The pileup of delays with less and less time to fix them brings Terry to new levels of frustration. We are probably two days behind, a day before it's supposed to go. If we don't get it done, there is no final battle. And this is this truly is do or die. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And soon, he just can't take it. If you can't make the deadline, you walk away broken. Coming up, can the guy snatch victory from the jaws of defeat? Yes, it's now picking up her punches again. The left didn't register. Look at this. The lips are just bombarding. Find out next. To inspire the future of gaming, the team at Prototype This has taken on the challenge of building giant interactive battling robots designed to reproduce a player's moves outside the ring in just two weeks. But on the final day, this build is on the ropes. Our guys are just a few hours away from a boxing match that still has only one fighter. The second robot must be completed before the big fight tomorrow. Earlier, Terry's frustration brought him to the brink. But now that his head is clear, he's back in the game and sees that his problem wasn't mechanical. It was human error. I hooked it up backwards. I hooked up the, uh, the airflow to the wrong side. Ah, the fallacies of the flesh. 
if we could only be more like our robotic brothers. Well, more like the completed one, at least. That's pretty wild. I don't think I've seen it at full speed. We have to build the second one now and actually get that functioning. Our guys are still in the fight. They rally together for one final push. And soon, against all odds, the second robot is ready to box. The second robot is done, and we're ready for fight night. The next morning, Terry and Mike load up the fighters and head for the arena. That is, if Terry and the robots can survive the drive. Drink! Drink! They pull in relatively unscathed and immediately get to work. It's enormous! The setup goes quickly, and the robots make their creators proud in a preliminary test. All right. Yeah, it is that one. It's alive! Alive! And before they know it, it's time for the final round of this bill, a very heavyweight championship. Let's get going already. Come on. I want to fight. Two weeks ago, Joe challenged Melissa, the pint-sized boxer who bloodied his nose, to a fight he thinks he can win. So tonight, Joe's skills and his honor will get thrown into the ring. It's fight night, and it feels just like the real thing. With over 200 hungry fans in a rocking arena, our two contenders make a dramatic entrance. And MC Dr. Mike North takes over. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to fight night. I give you the game of the future. Please welcome tonight's contenders. In this corner, from the Third Street Gym, Golden Gloves winner, Melissa McMurrow, and her robot, the Steel Slugger. And in this corner, representing prototype this, Joe Grand. Yeah, you're going down. Yeah, come on, give me some love. All right, step up. All right, here we go. Let the demolition begin. Our lovely ring girl starts the fight, and it's on. You will not desert me. The world's first giant boxing robot match is underway, and Melissa lands the first serious blow. But not hard enough to knock any of Joe's lights out. You can do better than that. But it gets Joe fighting mad. And the punches really start flying. Your moves will not work against me. Joe lands a vicious right to the head. Melissa loses a point, but she fights back. The team, especially Terry, is tickled with the results. <laughs> but towards the end of round one, there's a problem. Yes, yeah, it's not picking up her punches again. It's, it's all uh, defensive. The left didn't register. Melissa moves her body like the champion she is. But those body movements are clogging up the computer. It's the, the glyphs are, look at this. Are just bombarding. Because he and Zaz designed and built it, Joe knows when the system's overloading, so he stands still and throws fewer punches. There, that's better. There will be no bloody nose this time. Joe scores another point, and Melissa's saved by the bell. Go for the head! He's fine, he's fine. Joe's two health points ahead and looking good. So to help level the playing field, Terry gives Melissa some technical tips. Well, it's registering your body moves more than it's registering any uh, hitting. Yeah. So I put a cap on there so we'll only fill up to four moves. Okay. His message is simple. Move less, pick your punches, and the system won't overload. Exactly. Don't hit yourself in the face, though. <laughs> Round 
two begins, and it's Melissa's turn to come out swinging. Joe starts losing health on the meter. Clearly, Melissa's not out of this one yet. Terry must have given Melissa some good advice during the break, because in round two, she started throwing some really good punches, she moved around less, and it looks like the robots were just responding a lot better. The second round passes in a frenzy of metal on metal. Both robots take serious punishment, but when the bell rings, Melissa and Joe are tied. It's already an exciting game, but Terry's got a trick up his sleeve, one that requires the crowd to move back for safety. According to World Robot Boxing Regulations, we turn the pneumatic cylinder pressures all the way up to maximum. Round three, sudden death at maximum power. Going up. Probably 110 PSI. Okay, I know okay. you can handle that kind of pressure. I got the I got the power. I got it. Yeah. Now the pneumatic giants become killing machines. At full pressure, they're tearing each other apart. Melissa's steel slugger is the first victim of the added power. Her robot's right arm is disabled by the force of Joe's punches, and with only one arm to fight, she might be going down. Joe lands another blow to the head and knocks Melissa's lights out. It's all over. Joe's bloody nose redemption is complete. This prototype is a TKO, and the entire team basks in the glory. We have our winner! Yeah! So good! Feels good to finally get my revenge. She's a good fighter. It's pretty hard, sudden death. Traded some good punches. I've been working out for this, man. I knew it was my time to win. I'm surprised it went three rounds, actually. But I'm glad it did, because sudden death was just too much fun. I was really gratified to see how the crowd responded. They, they loved it. They cheered and stood up and clapped. That means that we've, you know, we've built a successful prototype. This prototype was built in only two weeks, but once it's developed and mass-produced, future versions will be just as interactive, but even bigger, stronger, and faster. And with enough time and money, they could be in arcades and boxing gyms everywhere. As the night comes to a close, the championship belt for this build resides with all the prototypers. And for Joe, at least, whenever he fights in the future, he'll be sure to take a boxing robot with him.